This is Katherine Schmer, and in this video we're going to discuss um, arc length and how to find it. We estimate arc length as we did in Calculus 2 by adding up many short line segments. Recall that as the number of line segments increase, we get a more and more accurate estimate of the arc length. If we take the limit as the number of line segments goes to infinity, then we get the following definition of arc length. Capital L equals the integral from A to B, so our starting point is A, our ending point is B, of the square root of dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared, and then on the outside of my square root I have a dt. So I'm integrating with respect to t. But notice that this whole expression um, that's underneath the square root and including the square root is actually the magnitude of r prime of t. So I can actually shorten my definition to l equals the integral from a to b of the magnitude of r prime of t dt. And I could also write that as the integral from a to b of the magnitude of velocity dt. So this is the definition that I'm going to use um, when I'm doing my calculation. And let's look a little bit at how we actually get this definition for arc length. So I'm starting out with a curve in space and I'm looking at um, the point where the curve um, is at time equals a, so that's x of a, y of a, z of a is the starting point on my curve. And the ending point on my curve is when time is equal to b. So it's the point x of b, y of b, z of b. So I'm, I have this three-dimensional curve. It's defined by the vector function r of t equals x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. So x, y, and z are all um, functions with t as the independent variable. Okay, so now to find arc length, you can see I've made a, um, several straight line segments in red. And let's just look at one, of, one point on the curve, so one of these straight line segments. So I have this point on the curve, um, I'll call it x1, y1, z1, and another point on the curve, x2, y2, z2. So I'm going to um, make a straight line segment between those two points on the curve. Now, using my regular distance formula, I have the distance of the line segment d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared plus z2 minus z1 quantity squared. So we covered that earlier in the term, how to find the distance between two points in space. Now if I think about what this actually is, it's the change in x squared plus the change in y squared plus the change in z squared all underneath a square root. So I'm writing um, square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared. Remember delta is how we represent a change in value. Okay, now arc length, we're going to call arc length lowercase s. That's our standard um, letter for arc length. So s of the curve, arc length of the curve, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of all of these um, short line distances. So the sum um, from i equals 1 to n of the square root of delta x sub i quantity squared plus delta y sub i quantity squared plus delta z sub i quantity squared. So the, the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of all of these short little um, line segment distances. So now looking at um, a point on the curve, so I'm starting my curve at t equals a, 
My second point on the curve I'm going to call t equals a plus delta t. So I get another x, y, and z point, but it's at the time a plus some change in time, so a plus delta t. Now the next point on the curve is going to be at t equals a plus 2 delta t. So I've added two of these changes in time. And so basically because of the way the curve is parametrized, I can just keep adding these changes in time to get different points on my curve. So the arc length formula, I can rewrite it as the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of the square root of delta x sub i over delta t quantity squared plus delta y sub i over delta t quantity squared plus delta z sub i over delta t quantity squared and then outside of the square root I have times delta t so it's the same equation I just divided everything under the square root by delta t squared and then put a delta t outside of the square root to compensate for that. Now this, you should recognize this limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n and then some expression times delta t, you should recognize this as an integral. So this is actually equal to the integral from t equals a to t equals b of the square root of dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt quantity squared plus dz dt quantity squared and then the dt outside of the square root. And this is our formula, the integral from a to b of the magnitude of velocity dt. So that's where the arc length formula comes from. Basically the same concept as what we used in Calculus 2 for a two-dimensional curve. We're just expanding it to a three-dimensional curve and we're saying that the curve is parametrized by a vector function. Now let's actually apply our formula. We want to find the length of the indicated portion of the curve, and our curve is r of t equals 2ti plus t squared j plus 1 third t cubed k from t equals 0 to t equals 1. Now this function should look familiar if you watched the video on the unit tangent vector. It's the same function. So we've actually already found the velocity and the magnitude of velocity, but we'll go through it again. Remember we want um, arc length s equals the integral from a to b of the magnitude of velocity times dt. So velocity is the derivative of position, so 2i plus 2tj plus t squared k is my velocity, and the magnitude of velocity is the square root of 4 plus 4t squared plus t to the fourth. That factors into the square root of quantity 2 plus t squared, quantity squared, and then the square root and square cancel out to give us 2 plus t squared. So that's my magnitude of velocity, 2 plus t squared. So I, I plug it into the arc length formula s equals the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 plus t squared dt, which is the antiderivative 2t plus t cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. So now I have to do my f of b minus f of a, so upper bound plugged in minus lower bound plugged in. So I get 2 plus 1 third when I plug in the 1 minus 0 plus 0 when I plug in the 0. So that gives me 7 thirds for my arc length. So if I traveled along the curve from t equals 0 to t equals 1, I would travel a total of 7 thirds units.